Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to create the enemy spawner. Enemy spawner would be responsible for creating our enemies. So let's start. So let's create the new thing and let's define uh, a root node as node 2D. Let's call this enemy spawner. And we want to also add additional node here, which is node 2D. One more. It will be used. Uh, kind of uh, as folder, I would say. So let's create the spawn points. And now we want to add a bunch of marker nodes. So we will be use those markers as indicator where do we want to spawn uh, our enemies. So let's enable the grid. And now we want to set location of every of those markers. So let's scroll a bit and let's start by like dragging each of them to some position, maybe every like three elements of the grid, maybe four. And let's define each of them. This will be used this as position where enemies should be spawned. So I added at this point, I added 10, but looks like it's not cover all the zones. So let's create like three more. Let's maybe make a bit bigger distances between them. Okay, now we covered everything. Let's save the thing. And we want to move this to the right part of the screen. So I select this spawn points. It will once, because they are children of the spawn points. So once I move the spawn points, everything else would be moved. And we want to add here additional node, which is called timer. Let's create. So timer has um, attributes as wait time. Let's set it to the two seconds and auto start. So uh, every two seconds, timer would set signal timeout. And we want to do some action when timeout happens. And we're using auto start to make sure star, uh, timer is automatically started when we started the game. Now let's add the script. Uh, let's save it to the script. Open and file exist. Sorry, let me delete because I was doing the testing. So right now we have the empty empty file, and we want for um, this to create our enemies. So how can we do it? Uh, we need a few functions. But first, we want to import our resources. Uh, so we need enemy scene. So I'm clicking here. I'm pressing the control and I move it. And I drag in it right here. And it's automatically create constant for me with everything what is required and also we want the spawn point so i can do the same i can click here press ctrl drag it here and now we have our spawn points so now we want to uh, create our uh, enemies but we want to know the position so first method which i'm going to create get spawn point so in this method i want to receive ran uh, like random position of one of those markers. So how can I do it? So I can, like we have this spawn points and this, as I previously said, it's kind of folder or array. So I can use this spawn points and I can get all of the children of our spawn uh, points. It will return me array with all of this element. Now I want to randomly select uh, those like one of the elements. So let's call it point. And I'm going to use points. And points has man method pick random. So pick random will select random element from this array and re uh, save it to this variable. And finally, we want to return. I'm using the keyword return. So that means that when it will exit from this function and return the value. And what value do I want to return? I want to return position of the point. So now we have position and we're ready to spawn our enemies. 
So I'm going to create spawn enemy. And here first we need to instantiate our enemy. So as previously we did multiple time, I'm taking this scene and I'm calling instantiate method. Next, I want to retrieve the scene where do I want to add our enemies and our case this is the world so I'm going to current scene and finally we can to the, our world scene we can add child we can add enemy so this will spawn enemy but they will be located in the wrong position so I want to also change the global position of our enemies so I'm going to use enemy global position and I would set the value to this function get spawn position so every time when this function is executed spawn enemy spawn enemy would execute get spawn point and the result of execution of this function would be assigned to the enemy global position so now let's go to the world and let's add our enemy spawner here okay so it's added as make make sure it's added as child of the world not as child of the player or any other object so and now i can save the game let's start and we should see our enemies coming no we don't see because we forgot to uh, create signal for our timer so let's back to the enemy spawner timer and in signals I have the timeout signal. So what do I want to do? I want to click connect and select our enemy spawner. This is where we have the script. So it's create method on, ta on time timer timeout. And what do you want to do here? It's simply call our spawn enemy function. And now if I start the game, I see that enemy is coming. Uh, so now we have automatic enemy uh, spawner. Next, what I want to do Signal is in to create um, a score. And I want to increase the score every time when we destroy the enemy. So let's go to the world. And on the world, we are going to add a new label so where do we have the world let's go here and there is the label so i can create label so here in the label i can select i can like define some initial text like score equal to the zero so here on the label settings i can uh like increase the size of the letters or i can I change the style, but we are going to use the default. So right now we have score equal to zero and we want uh, like dynamically change the value of the score. We can do it through through the script. So we need to create script to the, our world scene. Let's save it uh, to the scripts, open, create. So first we need to retrieve the label and let's rename label to something like score label and the same trick I move it right here and we got score label. Uh, so there is few options like how we can achieve this but we're going in this example we are going to use uh, things called getter and setter. So how does it work? So I can define the variable for example score which is equal by default to zero. And add, I can add here column and I can like, define the method. I can define the method get and for get, we can simply return the score. So what will happen if I uh, like retrieve the value of the score? But also there is the, another method which I can return. It's, it's called set and set required value. So what happened when we change uh, like the value of the score? So what we can do here, we can take our score label and we can change the text. 
So I can specify text equal, and then I can specify like what do I want to set here. But first, we all like we also need to update the score. So if, because if I say like here equal to the value, we will update the text, but this score will always this stay as zero. So first, I need to make sure that I'm increasing value of the score. So I'm setting score equal to the value. And now I can print something like this score. Uh, I think I, I'm using like this score equal. And I can do plus, plus, and I cannot use simply score because score it will be the integer and it's required the string so i need to convert the integer to the string so i can set it like this and now we need to define like where and when uh, we will be increasing the value so we can do it again with the signals this is kind of better way but here we would do it um, like really simple we will just get the world thin and we will um, call the like this setter method but as i said right away would be to use the signals but just to see how this can be done we would do it in this way so we have on body entered and this is the method where we are destroying our enemy so when enemy is destroyed what do we want to do we want to retrieve the world because our script is located uh, on the world node. So as usually, current thing. And here I can do world, and world has this score, and I can increase it by 20. Uh, like this. So by increasing the world score, we execute uh, this set method, which should or increase the value of the score but it also should update the text so now let's start the game and see so we have score equal to zero and now let's destroy the enemy you see it was increased by 20 every time when we kill the enemy and final thing which i want you to show you is to create explosion when we destroy the enemy so to achieve this we are going to create two new things first we would use the sprite and let me import the sprite sheet so i will share the link to the sprite sheet uh, in video description so let me import it here and assets so now we have this sprite sheet Let's disable the grid. So also, as in previous video, we already did it. So here is the our explosion, and it has, a, I believe, 10 sprites. So I, I'm setting an animation each frame set to the 10. And next, I'm creating the animation player. So we already did this a few times, so it should be familiar to you. So I'm going to create animation called explode and select sprite 2d we have the 10 so i'm just going to click here 10 times uh, looks like i was not in at the beginning so let's make sure we are at the beginning okay so now we're at the beginning and let's select sprite and let's click frame 10 times so six, seven, eight, nine. So now we have our animation. So this is what happened. We don't want to repeat. We want this animation to be executed only one time, but also we want after animation is done, we want it to disappear. So we can do it by clicking here, add track. So I can add track and here the call method track. But I need to make sure that I'm at the end of the animation because I want this animation to be destroyed once we reach end of our animation. So I'm going to click call method track and let's select sprite 2D 
Okay, so it's created this function and now I'm going to click here, insert key. So I got this and what I want to find here is the queue free. So I'm going to call this method void queue free open. So now when animation is over, it should destroy uh, our uh, like sprite. And now we somehow want to, uh, but let's make sure we save the scene um, and let's make sure we rename it. So explosion, but explosion is not really good. It's something like explosion creator, because we may want this explosion to be added to the player, uh, to the enemies and maybe to some other things. So later we will learn another way how this can be done, but right now we will do it from by using another scene. So let me define this scene at the simple node 2D. I'm still at uh, other node, node 2D. Right like this and I'm um, sorry, probably I messed up. This should be it should be explosion and this explosion creator, but let's call it ex explosion in creator like this and what we want to do here is to add the script make sure it's saved to the script folder explosion initiator create so now we have the script so first we want to get access to the our thing which is called explosion creator because we want to instantiate this thing and next we are going to define here the method, which is built in method in Go dot, which is called exit tree. So this method is executed every time when object is removed, when we execute in Q3. So because when we are destroying the object, we want like, for example, we have the enemy, when enemy is destroyed, this method will be executed. So as usually, let's retrieve the world, get tree current scene and now we want to instantiate our explosion so let's use explosion instantiate we did it already many times and we would do it this much more time in future so explosion and we want to set global position of explosion to global position that will this will mean that we will set the position of this animation where our object is located. So now let's save this one. And like now we have this explosion initiator and we can add this as a node to our enemy, for example. So we can click here and explosion initiator. So it work in the same way as we added like another scenes to uh, another nodes to the, our object. And here we have the Q3. So when enemy is dying, Q3 is executed. So when Q3 is executed, it should uh, trigger this from the explosion initiator. It should trigger exit three. And now let's run the game. So we got our fish, let's shoot multiple time but nothing happened and we got an error so it said parent node is busy setting up children at child failed consider adding at child called deferred so it suggests us to add here after add child it suggests us to add call deferred because it looks like some conflict is happening because at the same point of time we are trying to add uh, like destroy this thing and add new thing so let's execute it one more time and let's destroy the object and we failed so something is wrong called a non-existing called deferred. I think I made some typo in the call. What uh, deferred, I think it should be double R. 
let's run the game for the third time and hopefully this time it will work uh, like we got animation but animation is not executed we want to play animation uh, to fix this we need to go to the our animation player and make sure our animation is executed automatically so we have our scene which is called explosion creator let's go to the animation player and here uh, there is the button which allow us to run automatically this is a so let's click here let's save let's start the game one more time let's destroy the enemy animation executed enemy is destroyed so let's close and now we can also take our player and we can add the same animation to the our player so yeah i mess up with the names so i always forgot what what is what i believe this is the explosion initiator so let's just say let's save the game and let's wait for collision to happen between our player and enemy so yeah everything is, is destroyed so that's all for today have a nice day